Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. It has been a very long time since I've filmed with this background. The last month and a bit has been a little bit rocky, not gonna lie, but I'm fine, I'm here. <laughs> um, I became an auntie the other day, it's very exciting, and also my best friend had a baby, so there's lots of good things happening in my life. So yeah, I thought I'd just sit down this morning and chat to you whilst I do my makeup and let you know where I've been, what I'm getting up to. I have a little bit of footage of me painting my wardrobes, um, which is something I've wanted to do for ages and when I moved back home I was like, I need to put a little stamp back on the place to make it feel like it's it's my, my little area now. Let me get started with the makeup, otherwise I will just chat and then never put any makeup on. <laughs> I haven't been wearing much makeup recently so I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> I'm going to just use Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter and I put this instead of concealer most days now and then just in some other bits on my face. And I've been really enjoying not wearing concealer under my eyes. I have naturally very dark under eye circles and a load of discoloration in my eyelids but just don't care anymore like I just don't care if people can see it it used to be something that people always commented on on my videos like ooh her eyes are disgusting and things and I'd be like okay <laughs> but now I just know that it's what comes with very pale skin I'm gonna use a tiny bit of concealer just on any spots that I have thankfully today they're actually all behaving my little spot family um oh maybe I will put a tiny bit of concealer just in the corner there. I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer again but I find that it doesn't work very nicely under my eyes now for some reason. It really creases and stays in the crease. don't know why. It used to be a great concealer for me but it works on the face well I find and I just put, I have to put like the tiniest bit by my eyes otherwise it really creases up. So yeah, I moved home about a month ago, I think, so we've just been going through the whole moving out, inventory, cleaning, I was cleaning for days and it was exhausting. And I never ended up filming a house tour in that place, it wasn't a very special house, we were just renting it. And I didn't love the area we were renting it, we were living in Didcot, um, in South Oxfordshire, and I'm originally from North Oxfordshire. Um, so I wasn't very far from home but it wasn't the nicest area but it also had everything there, it was like super convenient, shops were like five minutes away, there were really nice little um, country walks around and about but you had to drive to the mall whereas living here at home I can just walk out and then walk not very far and then I'm in a field and it's just bliss and it's just how I want to live. <laughs> So wherever I move to next, it's going to have to have the countryside right next to it. I keep forgetting to tell you what I'm using on my face. I'm now using the Planet Revolution Blush in the shade Sweet Rose. I literally use this every single day. And I just dip my Real Techniques brush into it. And I also put a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury creamy bronzing stuff contour stick. Contour wand. <laughs> I've been working on a new pattern. I'm working on a tote bag pattern because that has been highly requested. And I'm probably going to make it so that you can do it either in the quilted style or just normal, like canvas tote bag style, um, so that you have the choice. I'm going to put some Refi brow gel on. I've already got the Fenty Beauty um, brow. MVP on in the shade True Red and I've been really liking this recently um, it's a very gingery shade I popped into London the other day to go and see the daily dress edit pop up I don't have any dresses in it this year but I just wanted to go and support Isabel who runs the whole shebang so that was really nice I got to try on a load of brands that I've wanted to try dresses on for for a while um, and I found some amazing vintage dresses 
definitely gonna have to take you guys along with me to Laura's vintage shop in London because she's got this amazing studio that you have to book an appointment for and so I'll definitely need to book an appointment and go there at some point because her dresses are just like 70s heaven and that is obviously very up my street. I'm gonna line my lips with pillow talk and then I put a little bit of that same blush just on my finger and then I pat that onto my lips. And then because my lips are always dry, I'm gonna use some of the Glossier Balm.com, just the original clear one. I'm really worried for the day I run out of all of these because I've heard that they changed the formula. And I literally live on this stuff. <laughs> I never got on with the colored ones as well as the just clear one. So if anyone's tried the new formula, let me know if it's any different, and if it is, I'm going to be very sad. <laughs> I'm going to put a tiny bit of Charlotte Tilbury powder just underneath my eyes and on the tops of my eyelid. Here's my little makeup bag. It's been so amazing seeing the response to the PDF pattern that I put up. Um, just didn't expect it, to be honest. I didn't expect it to go down that well. Obviously very pleased that it has, and now I'm excited to work on some new ones. I am going to try and find someone to help me out with them because I really want to make some dresses as patterns available to you guys one day but I just don't know how to grade patterns and that is the thing that I would struggle with and I obviously don't want you guys to make a dress in the size that you think you are and then it'd be like way too small or way too big because that just would be pointless and would be very frustrating for you. So I definitely would be getting someone to help with that and then trying it out with a few other people in their different sizes and everything before I release it. So that's why these things take a little while. So yeah, let me know if that would be of interest, having dress patterns or blouse patterns. Um, I'm also gonna try and get a few printed for those of you that live in the UK or anywhere that would want them. I tied my hair up for now because I just am not loving it at the moment. It's been really annoying me. I just feel like I'm constantly putting my hair up at the moment because I feel like that's all I look good having, which I feel like is fine, but I'm just also worried about my hair. Hair's health <laughs> with me having it up all the time. Oh, I guess I could, I keep forgetting to put it in like a braid or something. That would also look quite nice, wouldn't it? But anyway, this morning I need to finish filming a reel that I've been making about my vintage Laura Ashley dress. This is the dress in question. I don't know if you guys remember me buying this last year. But basically, the elastic had gone completely in the sleeves and the zip wasn't how I wanted it. So I've changed all of that and look at the nice new invisible zip. The previous, well, original zip, I'm assuming it was original, um, was quite chunky and I've also managed to get myself about one and a half centimeters more room in the dress which is amazing because it was quite tight across my chest so yeah that's great I spent literally a whole day making these changes because I just was so scared of messing it up but now it's perfect so I need to go and try it on and do my little clips for the ending of the video also I don't know if you can even tell the difference in my wardrobes if I've actually painted them <laughs> but I promised you I have and I've also added little like metal magnet latches so that they all sit flush because before I didn't have those and they wouldn't shut properly and it was really frustrating me so now they shut properly and I've added new little handles and everything painted them in the color matchstick from Farrow and Ball in their new dead flat finish so they're completely matte which, I don't know, I'm still not sure if that was a good idea or not, but I do love the way they look now. I don't like, didn't like the fact that they were just sort of like white, shiny Ikea doors, but um, I used a special primer that you can use on Ikea furniture. It's like a shellac based primer and oh my goodness, that stuff is amazing. But I made the mistake of not wearing gloves using it, so it was on my hands for quite a few days. <laughs> and I've also added some hooks right at the top, and they've been 
the best thing that I've added to these wardrobes because it's just so easy to get out an outfit, hook it up on the hook and it's not going to like damage the doors in any way because they're screwed into the doors. Um, so I'm very happy with how these have turned out. And I was going to do like the whole built-in process but you never know when I'm going to move house and undoing a built-in process seems very lengthy. So I just painted the doors and I really love how they look. So yeah, I'll insert some clips now of what the wardrobes looked like before. Um, obviously they were just standard IKEA finish. I had a little bit of time choosing the colour. I wasn't sure what I wanted. I basically wanted a dirty cream because I wanted to match it to my favourite print that I have that I found in a charity shop for £10 <laughs> of this little sort of Scandinavian looking farmhouse and I love the colour of the paper so I wanted that sort of carried out throughout the room so I definitely wanted a dirty cream. I tried three different colours I think. I think I tried Devon cream which was way too yellow and then I tried another one, I think it was hay maybe. Um, and that I thought was too dark but actually I think it would have worked fine because this has come out a lot lighter than I thought it was going to in this room um, but I still love the colour I think it's really nice and goes with everything really if I'm to move house it'll go with lots and then I had these Zara home handles that I'd bought in a sale ages ago thinking that I'd put them on something one day because they were an crazy cheap price in the sale <laughs> so they're a little bit small and impractical for these doors but I love the way they look and then the hooks I got in like an antique brass finish and I got those from home base so yeah overall I'm very happy with how the wardrobes have turned out so yeah I'm gonna get on and do all of those little filming clips and then maybe we can do some pottery together later because my mum has a wheel now downstairs and I've been using it and it's actually really good. <laughs> it was quite a cheap wheel. Gardening has been keeping me zen and sane recently. I'm just doing everything in pots this year. Planted loads of dahlias. I bought some snapdragon seedlings so they're about that big at the moment. Um, I The only thing I'm trying from seed this year is cosmos and basil and parsley and that's it. And what else have I got? I've got my rose that's doing really well, hydrangeas that are looking like they're going to be okay, fingers crossed. And I also have managed to successfully propagate a rose this year, which I'm very proud of. I had some beautiful roses last October from Oxford. They were like the biggest pale pink beautiful roses that I've ever seen and they don't smell which is the one downside but they look amazing and I decided to take cuttings of the stems so they were just cut flowers and then I found a YouTube tutorial on how to do it, dipped them in rooting powder, stuck them in some soil with like a an old plastic bottle over the top and one of them rooted and has grown into a rose bush and I literally cut the first rose yesterday and it's ginormous. But yeah, it's good to be back filming. Hopefully lots more coming your way soon. I am posting a lot more on Instagram than I am on here. I do want to try and get back to posting more on here. Um, but if you want more of my content then make sure you follow me on Instagram because that is where I post most things. Time to do some pottery. So this is the little setup we've got going on so far. Do you think it's <laughs> And then I think we're going to use this shelf for things that are ready to be glazed. So I've only got one thing that's come back ready to be glazed so far. I bought some new brushes the other day and a little sponge but me and mum mainly share everything and we have double of everything so we just use them until they break and then we replace them. Our setup is definitely not aesthetic <laughs> but we don't care it's just fun to throw and we don't have the filtering water system that you need for a proper studio so we just literally fill up 
buckets and then go outside and wash them and put the water all in the flower beds so that we don't ruin the drains. So I've seen these bowls that florists keep using and they've sort of got a little stand and then a bowl and so I'm going to try <laughs> try and throw one of those today. So I've got the last of my lava fleck clay that I'm going to use up. I'm going to start with the smaller bit to get my hang of it. Whack it on the wheel and I'm just going to hope for the best. Wet my clay. I've managed to centre the clay and now I'm going to open it out pull it and try and pull up the walls. I am really not someone to take tips from so I only just know what I'm doing so do not do not assume that I am very good at this but it is a bit addictive doing pottery so I'm gonna find the center now the scary part I'm pulling out the walls the shape I wanted for the base. I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to try and wire it off. I don't even know if this wheel is, go is going to be able to cope with this amount of clay but we shall see. There's only one way to find out. done. The bowl is a bit wobbly but I'm hoping it's going to hold up and I can trim it nicely and then it will sit on top of this bit. You always have me go my way. I just tried trimming the things I threw yesterday and they're not quite dry enough so I thought I'd just wait and sit down and show you a few of the things I threw a few weeks ago that have come back from their bisque firing. Also show you something I made this morning. <laughs> I didn't make all of it this morning but um, I became an auntie last week and I thought I probably ought to make something for little baby girl. So I didn't really know where to start with baby clothes, making baby clothes, I've never made them before. Um, so I was like Ugh. and then I saw a shirt that I was going to get rid of to the charity shop and I was like oh I could uh, probably make that into a baby dress because you don't need much fabric for a baby dress. I think it's probably going to be a bit too big on her for quite a while because she is just a tiny little thing right now. I haven't even been to see her yet um, but look, look how cute it is. I even made a little makeshift hanger out of an Amazon package. <laughs> The shirt already had all of this gorgeous pin tuck detailing in it and it's a really nice quality shirt but it just, it's one of those ones that's quite outdated and I was like, I'm never going to wear that. Um, so it makes a perfect little baby dress and then the back is just plain and I found all of these ruffle trim little bits in my stash from previous making projects. But yeah, I'm so excited to see the little baby. Maybe I'll have to make something for Amber's little boy now. And I definitely recommend this for anyone wanting to make some baby clothes. Um, finding an interesting looking shirt and just sort of using the front part of it and all the other bits to make this. So these are some of the things I have back from the bisque firing. 
As you can see, I went a bit ruffle crazy and I've made just some little ruffled plant pots and they'll obviously all go on their saucers but I'm terrified of smashing anything right now. This is probably my favourite one. I put three little holes in at the bottom because I didn't have like one big hole maker. I actually quite like the way it looks with three little drainage holes. So I have to wait a little while to go and glaze these. I did buy some transparent glaze, brush on glaze to have at home um, for when I want to do like painting on it. I also bought some under glazes. Here's the plate that goes with this one. It's so cute. And then this tiny one is so cute. This is going to shrink even more probably when it's fired. But it's a tiny little baby one. And a baby saucer. And that fits on there. How cute. So yeah, the plan for today is to finish trimming my new bowl vase thing. And I need to order some bats to go on the wheel head. And what else shall I do? Oh, I really need to tidy my studio because I've been in a pottery mood. And so I've been neglecting the studio and my new pattern. <laughs> this is what happens when I get into the creative blow. <laughs> Tidy studio again. Now that my studio is clear and my pottery is drying outside, while I wait for that, I thought I'd show you the shape I'm working on for the next pattern. So this is the Mary tote bag that I made probably over a year ago at least, maybe even two years ago. I still get questions asking me if I'm going to be making any more. It has a little handle and it also has a long handle and I do use it pretty much every time I go out where I know I'm gonna need a big bag at some point because it's a really pretty bag folds up nice and small but what I wanted to make was a stiffer tote bag that is a bit more of a weekend style bag um, but also a tote bag and I kind of wanted the pattern to have everything in one so if you want to make it in a lighter fabric you can and if you want to make it in a heavier fabric or if you want to quilt it then you can as well and I need to add the pocket to the pattern because I haven't done that yet because I came up with a different pattern um, and this one has a drawstring at the top of the bag so the drawstring is way too big like the depth I need to make this about half so I need to edit that um, but I've recently found a very good method of how to make a drawstring which I can't believe I hadn't done before don't know why it took me this long to figure out the proper way to make a drawstring so you don't have any raw edges showing I mean I didn't ever have any raw edges showing in the past they were just overlocked but I love creating seams that just are like beautiful on both sides. So this is the new one I've been working on and I've made it in a thicker cotton twill and I just there's just something that's not sitting right with me with this one. I think it's the fact that the handles are quite thick. I think I need to make them the tiniest bit thinner um, because they're a bit thinner on the Mary tote. So I think if I keep them roughly the same width and then this is fully lined on the inside with a nice little pocket so yeah I'm gonna try it again today and this was like a first draft basically I saw a thing on Vogue the other day on their Instagram that said that a new trend is gonna be like crazy baby hairs or like a real like they had this runway image and the girl's hair was all like this 
And they were like, it's going to be the new thing. And I don't think that's going to take on somehow. <laughs> I should not have pulled the baby hairs out because now they will not go back. Okay, I think I think they're behaving a bit better now. I've just put about a weekend's worth of stuff in here. And I reckon this is a pretty good size. Because if you're travelling, you don't want anything too much more than that. Just for the weekend. I like that. I think that's really cute. So that's good, I don't need to change the size, I don't think. I think any bigger and it's just a bit ridiculous. You like may as well take a suitcase. This is my ginormous Suzanne weekend bag and I've always thought that this is just too big. Um, I mean, it's, it's good because it's so big, but it looks a bit ridiculous, I always think. I then was thinking about pockets and trying to decide if I should add a pocket on the front or not. If I do this in a quilted version, I wouldn't. But I may add a pocket like on the side here. That could also look quite nice. I've made a very poorly constructed pocket there. <laughs> it's just to see what we think. I don't think I like it. <laughs> I think it looks better without a pocket. Yeah, no, it ruins it. Okay, there we go. That decided that. I think pockets can be great, but they can also be ruin things completely. So I think that ruins this. If you want to add a pocket, go for it. Add as many pockets as you want to this pattern. But I reckon it looks better without, and I mean, pocket is not a hard pattern to make yourself. My other one had a pocket on the front there. My previous tote bag had a pocket about there. Um, I don't think it would work for this one as well. This is my everyday makeup bag and I have a little bit more of this fabric so I'm going to make this bag in the quilted version. And then I also might make some in the yellow because I have enough yellow. This is where I store all of my stock and I still have some more of the yellow buttercup quilted toiletry bags. The lighting is off. I've switched the lights off because it was a really bad light. <laughs> it's just a bit dark now. But yeah, I have some more of these tall toiletry bags in the buttercup and I think I'll make one or two of the bigger bags in a quilted version to sell for you guys. I've still got a few boxy ones as well. So those are all patiently waiting for their new homes. So there we go. I'm gonna go and edit this bag and then do some pottery this afternoon. <laughs>